Welcome back. I'll uh, now finish this part of the uh, appetizer um, of the lecture. And uh, then right after that, we'll start uh, diving into uh, uh, a brush up of SQL and relational databases, just what you need to know in order to, uh, to uh, make the most of the lecture. All right. So you might have heard that plenty of times it's all over the professional social networks and so on, data turned into information, into knowledge, into wisdom. But what are we talking about right here? Well, there is the realm of databases. Um, this is what we are, where we are in this lecture. Then there is machine learning. It's when you try to make predictions and extract patterns from data. And then there's artificial intelligence uh, when you, you delegate the decisions or you enhance the decisions with the assistance of a machine. Right? But in this lecture, we are heavily focused on databases. It doesn't mean that there is no machine learning in there, because as I'll show you later, there's actually a machine learning library, the, 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 the product that, that we built and that we are going to be using in the lecture. So you can still have fun with machine learning if you want. But this is really a lecture focused on databases, how to store data and how to query data. Any data is a database, by the way. A database is not a computer or a machine. A database is the data itself. A database system is the... Uh, the, the computer database management system. All right. Um, so this is the TA team. Let me introduce uh, um, them to you. So uh, this is John Howe. I think you are here, John Howe, right? I saw you in the chat. So uh, John Howe, yes. Uh, so John Howe is the head TA uh, of, of the team. Uh, we also have Wenxi, uh, who is moderating the lecture every week. Hello, Wenxi. So uh, Hi, you uh, can interrupt. Yeah. Yes. Hello, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Wen Xi. I'm a PhD student in the system group uh, in the Department of Computer Science. So I will be here to moderating the, uh, the Zoom streaming in the lecture hall for the entire semester. So if you have any question, please feel free to raise your hand and I will repeat your question to the, to the Zoom. Thank you, Wenxi. So indeed, you can interrupt me at any time. All you need to do to interrupt me is raise your hands or put a question in the chat, and, and then I'll, uh, I'll answer it. I want this to be interactive, right? So you can interrupt me at any time. You should never hesitate asking questions. You know yes. how it goes with questions, right? You might be wondering, oh, I'm going to ask a stupid question. No, there is no such thing as a stupid question in a, in a university. You're here to study. And let me tell you what's going to happen when you, when you ask your question. Half of the people in the room will be thankful to you for asking it because they didn't dare ask the question. So do not hesitate, interrupt me, ask questions. Uh, I want to make sure you understand everything, especially because you're not computer scientists. This is a computer science lecture. Ah, there you go. It has changed indeed to 15 past. So, um, so you're not computer scientists. We are doing computer science. I really want to make sure that you understand what I'm telling you because the, the whole point of databases data science is to be used by other fields right people in other fields all right uh, so then we have uh, uh, david we have susie we have alex uh, anastasia monica melisande uh, hauran and thomas is anybody of them here in the in the in zoom or in the lecture hall otherwise they're actively preparing the exercise sessions all right oh we have thomas hello thomas uh, you want to unmute yourself or uh, I think let me make you a co-host if you want to say a few words. There you go, your co-host Thomas. Hi, right. hey everybody. Um, my name is Thomas. I'm a second year master's student and I'll be TAing this course. So I'm looking forward to teaching you all. I'll be doing the Wednesday four to six, including the hybrid exercise sessions. So hopefully for a lot of the remote students, I'll be seeing you every week. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So this is a wonderful opportunity to answer the question that was asked in the chat, uh, that there is indeed a hybrid exercise session offered by Thomas every Wednesday from four to six. And uh, if you want to connect via Zoom, then this is the one uh, you should connect to. And the link, of course, will be shared. Uh, all other sessions are going to be in presence. Uh, and, and you can register. I'll say a few more words, right? Um, or I can see it now. So we have seven groups. You can find them in my studies. You should register for a group. There are four groups on Wednesday, two to four and four to six. And there are three groups on Fridays from four to six. As I said, all in presence, except Thomas's group, which will be hybrid. Uh, there's a Zoom integration. You see it works beautifully in the lecture hall. We also have it 
in, in, in uh, the room where Thomas uh, uh, will be, right? So we, we make sure that the course can be followed online uh, um, because there, there are some of you who, who, who really prefer this or need this. Uh, uh, so we make sure that you can follow it that way. And of course, there will be the recordings that you can watch uh, later as well. All right, so this is our, uh, our team. Uh, uh, just for the lecture. Uh, yes, I also go got a question in, during the break. So what is the scope of the exercise session? Would that be theoretical or more about programming? And will there be any projects out there? Both of that. We'll have the theoretical part. We'll have a practical part. Uh, you will actually write queries and query data with MapReduce, with Spark, um, with json -E. You'll play with HDFS and so on with storage systems. So you'll have a lot of practical exercises. Why is that? Because this, we want this to be useful for you. You know, you, you, you might have, I don't know, a semester project or a master's thesis where you will need to query data. Or maybe some of you are PhD students or will be PhD students, uh, I should say doctoral students uh, later, right? Uh, so you will need to query data. So we want to already get you into the habit of actually touching data practically during this course. And then I hope that you can use everything you learn in that lecture. You can use it later in your master's thesis or in your, in your doctoral thesis, right? So, so that's the goal. This is why we will also have some practical exercises for you. And we can't wait to see what you will do with that with the data in your field uh, uh, later on. So what will you equip you with? What will we equip you with? So we are going to look at how to store data. So we'll teach you how to store in cloud services like S3, Azure Blob Storage, HDFS, we do that syntax. Data can have, but there's also formats that can be more efficient than that. We'll look into data models for trees, uh, typically trees and uh, trees and cubes. Uh, so we have, uh, so this is the part that I said is in information systems for engineers and we don't have graphs, but we look heavily into XML and JSON uh, uh, and this, uh, this uh, sort of format. It's not exactly XML and JSON, more precisely it's going to be data frames. So if you heard about the hype about pandas and so on, that's pretty much it, but more theoretical and, and, and even better that, than just using Python. But this is pretty much what it is. It just happens to be the JSON syntax, which uh, uh, not so many people are aware of. HBase is the white column stores. Uh, then we have Hadoop, MapReduce, uh, Spark, and so on, and we use also for doc as a document store an example MongoDB, and we use uh, JSONIC in order to uh, to query the data. That will be the high level, right? So this is the first slide I showed you at the start of the lecture. You're sitting in front of your Jupyter notebooks, and you're the you're the king or the queen of the world, right? You type your query and you see the answer. But for all of that to work, we need all of that, right? So this is why everything that's behind the scene we will cover in the lecture and then you'll see why at the high level the lipstick level you will uh, actually see it uh, all in action all right so this is what we do we have the oh i need to put, pick the right hand um this is the weekly lecture tuesdays 10 to 12. uh then you have the exercise sessions as we said there are seven groups please uh, uh, register to them um, we will have some self-study and reading material. We are trying to keep it um, reasonable. Please read them. <coughs> we'll say if it's mandatory or optional every time. And of course, you need to play with the technology. Right? And finally, you'll have a written exam at the end, three hours in the uh, uh, summer and uh, winter session. Right? It's going to be authored twice. All right. Uh, and for this, you get six uh, credit points, right? If you if you uh, succeed at the exam. I wanted to say something else on the exercise session. Yes, there is no exercise session this week, the first week. Instead, there will just be a support session. Um, an exercise zero is going to be distributed by the TA team in order for you to check that you can use uh, the software we are going to use, but it's really just uh, a warm up, right? And if you have any problem, then come. Uh, Hauran will host uh, an online session for everybody who has a problem on Friday, and then you can join and uh, you, you will get help, right? But the real exercise sessions the, where you have all the groups and all the TAs teaching in groups will be next week, right? Starting the Wednesday uh, next week, right? Okay. And one more thing there are bonus points. You can get up to a quarter point more 
at your exam, this is part of uh, the uh, continuous assessments of performance at ETH, it's to motivate you to learn. So every week you'll have one or two series of exercises, of quizzes uh, in the Moodle. And if you pass a series, then you get 0 0.01 points, right? And then of course, the more you get, uh, the closer you are to 0 0.25, and then we will add that to your exam grade before the round. So before we round it to the next quarter point, we'll first add these bonus points. And uh, that basically gives you a stochastic way of improving your grades uh, at the exam. Do we have questions in the chats, the Zoom chat? Uh, yes, there is a chat asking whether we are going to record the hybrid exercise session. And yes. Uh, yes, that's the plan. Do you confirm, Thomas? Uh, yes, I'll confirm that. Yeah, all right. So that's the plan. The, and, and this right now is also recorded. You can watch it on YouTube. Hello, if you're watching right now on YouTube. So th this, is, this, will all going, this is all going to be uh, publicly available and you can watch it whenever you want. I, I know that some people actually don't come to the lecture and instead watch the recording because they can play it at 10% uh, or 20% faster in order to compress what I'm saying into, into less times than, uh, than this, uh, these 90 minutes, right? And, and of course you should feel free to do that. Uh, if you want, uh, that's fine with me. Um, and, uh, and of course, you can repeat and repeat and just listen again to what I'm saying. Of course, if you discover I'm saying nonsense and there's a mistake, tell me. Uh, but uh, but uh, you, otherwise, you can just uh, listen again and again um, to make sure you understand. Um, all right. OK, that's good. So this is an opportunity for you to get bonus points. Um, the goal is to motivate you. Right, so if you, for example, if you're barely passing, but you believe an answer that you gave should be accepted and so on, then write an email to the TA team and negotiate. It's scientific negotiation. It's up to you to convince the TA team that, uh, that you should be granted the points, right? But this is the goal to motivate you to also have a scientific discussion, right? But, but, uh, but really do the quizzes and try to get as many of these bonus points uh, as you can for the, uh, for the exam, right? This will give you extra motivation. We we'll use some software during the semester. So this is why we ask you in this week with exercise zero to be familiar with it. The TA team is preparing something. We we'll use Docker for an easy installation of much of the software you use, because guess what? Even though we are teaching for clusters, you can do so many things on your laptop and, and then it will work on a cluster as well. So this is why we use Docker on your laptop. And if you want to have fun with a cluster, we also have plenty. We have a grant uh, on Azure that, and, and you can play with it if you want. Uh, if Docker doesn't work, for example, you can ask to access Azure instead, or if you want to play around in some exercises, you have the opportunity uh, to do this as well, right? So this is the software we are going to use. Is there another question? Yes. Uh, do the exercises have to be passed before the continuous deadline or just before the exam? There's going to be a deadline every week, right? Uh, so it will. when will it be, did you decide? Is it uh, Wednesday noon every time or? Uh, yes, I think it's Wednesday. Yeah, so the, the TA team will tell you, the TA team will tell you it's going to be every week, every week we try to make it uh, um, consistent, right? So you'll have one week to solve the exercises typically, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, you need to, to submit your answers uh, by, uh, by the end of, uh, of uh, the, 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 the period every time but not right before the exam, it must be done every week because the whole point is to make you work during the semester. Uh, if, if we did it and you can do it in the last minute, then there's no added value anymore to the bonus points, right? Because we want you to work through that with the semester and interact with us. All right. And there's one more thing I want to tell you uh, because let me tell you about this RumbleDB uh, that I mentioned uh, with JSONIC. It's a project that we made right here at ETH with master students and PhD students for teaching. We built RumbleDB for the big data and big data for engineers lecture in order to show you how you can query a whole cluster on the high level. So it's a project that is now uh, probably five years old and uh, other universities are starting to use it. And we try to improve the way you can install it, right? Because at the beginning, you needed to manually do many things like install Spark manually, and then it didn't always work and so on. So we are trying to make it easier every time for you to install. And this year, what we would like to do, thanks to David Dao, is we would like to have a homebrew uh, recipe 
you know, it's a way to install software in Linux, in Mac OS and so on, and on Windows with the, uh, the Linux extensions. And we would like it to make it that easy for you to install it. Bro install Rumble, and then you can just run on the command line or uh, in the Jupyter Notebook. But the thing is, uh, we need to demonstrate to the homebrew people that RumbleDB is, uh, is uh, popular enough. So this is why I need your help here. I need you, as many of you, to watch Fork and Star, but especially watch because this is where we are missing uh, people. I think there's a, a bare minimum of 30 that we need to, uh, to make the bar. So please watch Fork and Star, the repository, if you can. Uh, this is uh, for you because then you'll be able to install it very, very, uh, very easily. So please go to this address right there and, uh, and help us and help yourself because again, we, we are doing all of this for you. All right, uh, otherwise this is the end of this first appetizer part. I'll switch over in a few minutes to the SQL brush up. Before that, do we have any questions? Yes, Anything? Uh, there is a question. Uh, would you recommend a specific operating system for the software used in the lecture? or does anyone work? So this is the reason we are using Docker. Um, so Docker, I don't know, many of you probably know it, but maybe not everybody. Docker is a way to install software in the same way on any operating system. It means that it works on Mac OS, it works on Windows, and it works on Linux in the same way. It, it's really meant to be standardized. Why? Because the software that we are using is actually inside containers. And these containers are run in, in virtual machines, uh, isolated uh, from your laptop. So this is the, the reason why it doesn't play any role what operating system you are using. Docker should work uh, anywhere. We just have one known issue that on some uh, MacBooks with the M1 chip, that there are issues with Docker. If that happens with you, uh, so if you also have Linux or Windows, you can try it. But otherwise, just do it on, on the Azure platform. It works as well, right? So if, if, if Docker doesn't work for you, uh, ask uh, uh, Anastasia or the TA team to, uh, to give you access uh, to, the, uh, to the platform, right? Did I answer your question? No, that's it. All right. All right, any other questions? Oh, oh sorry, that, that's what you said. We know no other questions. Oh, no, right. not in the lecture hall. All right, so uh, this is not the end of today. Do, do, don't run away and leave the room. It's just that I need to separate the recording so that then I end the recording. That will be part one. And then I will start the real recording for uh, the SQL brush up. It makes it easier for you to, uh, to, uh, um, to um, find uh, the recordings. So uh, uh, stay here uh, and uh, I, I'll be back with the start of the next part in just uh, a few seconds. Thank you very much. <laughs>